Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to cover the topic of, of uh, parametric equations, what are known as parametric equations, okay? Uh, this section uh, throws people for a loop sometimes because it's something you've generally never heard of until you get over in Calculus 2. You kind of wonder why it's taught at all. The, 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 the dirty little secret is uh, you don't use it that much, but whenever a system or, or something that you're studying in real life in engineering or in physics has a need for a parametric form of the equations. It's really powerful and it's really simple. You don't use them that much, but when you need them, you really need them bad and it really helps your problem out a lot. So you cover it in calculus here. Uh, it has a fancy name, parametric equation. What does that mean? I think the easiest way to do it, rather than try to talk to you about it, is to show you. It's really not that hard at all, okay? Now recall, I'm gonna recall uh, you know, some basic stuff that we all know. Recall that a curve can be represented by a function, okay? Uh, this is, this is super basic stuff. There's no trick questions here. Here's a function, right? So what we have here in general is we have y, uh, which is also called f of x, okay? And what we do, and I'm going to write down some simple stuff here, is we take and we plug in x into this function, which is just some equation or whatever, and what we do is we get something called y out. So we plug in uh, something into, into this uh, function, and we get y out, okay? And you all know, you know, back from, you know, algebra, that when you do this, you, uh, you get two points. You get an x point and a y point, and you, pl you plot this thing on a graph. And this is at x comma y. You know this. This is sort of, at this point, this is like third grade math to you, right? You plug something in, you get something out. Uh, okay. Now, it turns out those are the types of functions that we've studied all of our, you know, math life up until now. And here we we talk about the subject of parametric equations. It's just a different way to write a function, okay? Now, let me, let me talk to you about something and let me tell you something, okay? Let's say this function that you're trying to plot, it could be anything, but it, it goes like this, okay? Whatever, it's just some crazy looking function. And we say that this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate, okay? Now, we have a function that we call f of x, right? That talks about the relation between x and y. We put a number x in, we get a number y out. That's exactly what we're saying here. Now, it turns out that you can, and I'm just gonna write it down in all its glory and then we'll talk about it. You can also write any function as a parametric function or a parametric equation, which is a big fancy word, and all it means is the following. Instead of having a single function that talks about the relationship between x and y, you can say that the, that the uh, variable x is a function of some other variable t, and y is a function of some variable t, okay? So this is it, okay, and I'll talk about why. t here, is uh, called is called the parameter and that's why it's called parametric equations because it's a parameter parameter okay and it's called a parameter because this is a parametric equation that's where the name comes from okay so what happens is t is now the independent variable Okay, so you know, way back in the beginning of algebra, you were always taught about the dependent and the independent variable. The uh, independent variable was x because that's what you varied, and the dependent variable, the variable that depended on him, was y because that's what the function was written in terms of x, right? You plug in x, you get y. Okay, here uh, the easiest way to think about parametric equations is this: instead of x, uh, y depending on x, you split everything up. This curve is, is overlaid onto an x-y grid. And I have an equation that only talks about the x points of this curve, and I say that they're related to t. Now, for me personally, uh, the easiest way I think of this, I always think of t as time. Okay, it just it just helps me. So think of t as time from now on. I think you'll be in good shape. X, the x variable, depends on time. Okay, y completely independently of x, totally independently. These are not coupled together at all. This is a totally separate function. Y depends on time. Okay, so just back up to the 100,000 foot level for me and just think about this. If I start time at zero and I have a function of t that governs the values of x and, and of course I can calculate them because I know what the variable time is, it goes from one second to two seconds to three seconds to four seconds, whatever. At every value of time I can calculate the x value 
And at the same time, I can calculate the corresponding y value. Okay, so at one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, I calculate the y values, okay? So at every value of time, I get an x value by plugging into this relation right here, and I get a y value at the exact same time. And that gives me x and y at the same time. And I can plot that on an equation just like I did before. So you see, it's really not that different from what you've already learned. Instead of having a function y in terms of x and plugging in x and getting y, here I've decoupled the coordinates, okay, and I have a function that only gives me the x's and a function that only gives me the y's. And it's in terms of time. As time marches on, I get values of x's and values of y's, and I pair them up just like I always have, and I plot them just like I always have. So for any function that's an x and y that has a function associated with it, I can define this parametric form of it that has the x coordinates in terms of some variable t that I like to call time. And I have the y's at that also, and also at those uh, values of t, which I call time. And that's why the books say that t is the independent variable. Uh, it's the variable that you have per parameterized, sometimes is how they call it, okay? So what you have is instead of one equation, you have two. So this section, what we're going to do now that we've introduced it is, we're not going to do too much. All we're going to do is we're going to look at some parametric equations and plot them. We're going to get some, a feeling for how they work. In the next sections, we're going to actually use them to do uh, some problems like arc length and, and uh, uh, surface area and things that we've done uh, before, but we're going to do them in parametric uh, coordinates. So that's, that's where we're going, but in this section, we're just going to simply look at some parametric equations and give you some practice with what they would actually look like. Okay?